Hi friends, it's Cynthia Walker here again at the Brickstar Museum. We're in collection storage. Um, I'm up here today looking for uh, one of our interns who's helping us out this summer has asked if we have anything um, related to steampunk. And of course steampunk is a made-up aesthetic but um, it mostly it surrounds the Victorian era uh, design. So I'm up here looking for um, examples of that to send along to her because she's creating a, um, an exhibit for or a pop-up online exhibit for our steampunk fair which is coming up on August 8th. It's going to be digital so you can find it right on www.brickstarmuseum.org. So as I'm walking around here today I thought I'd show you a little bit more of, of storage and see if we can find anything for her to use um, that shows off that Victorian style that steampunk is so well known for. So, um, you know, kind of copper and bronze colors, the big heavy uh, gears, um, leather, dark clothing, things like that. So if you do visit us um, on Steampunk Day on August 8th on our website, you're going to see a lot of different videos talking about what Steampunk is if you don't know what it is. Um, and then showing you a lot of different um, styles and uh, clothing. As we're going to take a little tour into our own collection storage for clothing and show you a little bit about what we have for Victorian clothing there. So a lot to look forward to. But right now we're going to get on to searching. And I thought I'd walk us through uh, the art storage. I'll point this out as we go by. Um, this gentleman, his name is Pan, and he was created um, by Edith Barry, the museum's founder, as a garden statue. He once uh, took his home in Pasadena, California, at Edith Barry's sister's home. Um, he traveled all the way back here in uh, 1970 or 71 uh, when her sister came back to make sure the museum was doing well, and she brought him. Um, brought him back here. <laughs> so as we walk back here, um, I know we visited in here before and I talked a little bit about one of Edith Barry's paintings um, and a couple of other things, but I just wanted to show you there's a whole array of paintings and there was a gentleman who came in a couple weeks ago uh, asking us for this specific painting to be pulled out and of course um, we had to explain to him that it takes a lot more uh, time to locate a painting and to pull it out and not because the paintings are lost but because there are so many we just have to be exacting in where those paintings are and safely take them down and everything else in between so you can see there's a dog there painted by Abbott Graves and there is its owner Mrs. Abbott Graves <laughs> And then over here in the corner, um, it's a four, you can see it's a four panel um, mural, which is called The Greatest Show on Earth, uh, painted by Edith Barry. She was a big fan of the circus, especially in New York City in the 1950s, and she did several paintings talking about the circus in the 1950s. And that is a gigantic panel. It's about seven feet tall um, and probably about 20 feet wide. So it's pretty impressive when it's all open. I will say it's on a very very heavy board so when it comes down it comes down for a long time. <laughs> um, here are some mirrors so you can see me in the mirror there. <laughs> a lot of variety of different um, styles of mirrors. Um, some that have uh, paintings on top of them. Some as you can see uh, need some preservation work. And a lot of different things. And as one of our previous videos went over, uh, we have a lot of Edith Barry artwork. Ours is the largest collection of Edith Barry's in the world. Of course, you can find some of her work uh, in different auction houses. Um, there is one that we have been watching uh, in a Danish auction house for the past few years. It has yet to sell, so we're, we're waiting for it to come down in price a little bit. Um, but if anyone's interested, it's called Van Gogh at the Met. So if you look up, so the artist Van Gogh at the Met um, and look up an image of that, you'll see a, a piece of art of Edith Barry's that the Brickstar Museum does not have and it is currently in Denmark. <laughs> so I thought I'd um, just go along the, along the um, 
rows here and just pull out a couple things just so you can see what it is that we have in the collection. I'm not going to be able to name everything, but this is a really great shot. I'm going to guess this is Picnic Rock with uh, boaters. Let's see. Yeah, it's a recent donation as well from 2018. So, Picnic Rock boaters, that's a big part of Kenny Bunk's tourist history uh, in Kenny Bunk Port as well. Let's see, let's pull out another one. Here is a painting of the uh, Ross Block here in uh, downtown Kennebunk. So you can see, um, actually, the up close of this, it shows the Kennebunk Savings and Loan. And then there used to be a drugstore um, in that building right now uh, where, these, where this car is kind of parked is Christian's Cafe, and then there are condos uh, sitting above it, obviously. But all that's still there. And then look at this fantastic piece of, uh, of a local home. Uh, you can tell this is watercolor, but the shading is really, is really perfect. So one thing I wanted to highlight as I was walking in here before, um, I spotted this piece, which is not a piece of art, but it's a framed, um, it's a framed archival piece which says the Philadelphia Athletics Baseball Club of 1910, American League, uh, Connie Mack, manager, champions for 1911. And all the way up in the corner here is, um, it says Coombs, pitcher, and he was a native of Kennebunk. Um, and he was, he actually has, uh, still holds some various um, uh, records and championships in the uh, American League. Uh, he's not in the he's not in the baseball hall, hall of fame yet, but <laughs> you can hear more about his story uh, in two places. We've just released our July 2020 um, podcast episode of the Brick. So if you go on our website in the Digital Learning Center, you'll find a link to our podcast that you can listen to. Um, again, that has a little chat about uh, Bobby Coombs and his contributions to. American baseball in the early 20th century. And then we also have a chat with a woman named um, Diana Hutchins Abbott, who she tells us she lives here um, in Wells, and she tells us about her uh, life's history, as well as her experience um, being diagnosed with polio in 1955. So it's a really, really um, touching interview, and I hope you take some time to listen to that. And then the other place that you can find the story of Bobby Coombs, I'll mention, forgot to say that, is um, one of our interns this year that I mentioned before. She is working on an online exhibit of Bobby Coombs to tell you a little bit more and to show you more of what I just pointed out, to show you more of um, the objects and the archival documents that we have here in the museum that tell his story. So let's just take a view of a couple more things. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> That's the Brick Store Museum in 1986, painted by Sissy Buchanan. Very colorful. And then this little thing, which is a copy, obviously, um, of a fish that was drawn, I believe, by a man named Joseph Hatch. And he named it Dolphin, actually, but I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it's a fish. <laughs> so we really have a, a great array of things <clears throat> that are here in the Brickstore Museum's collection. Um, I keep pulling out examples of Brickstore Museum featured <laughs> paintings, but um, you know, right behind it, for instance, is this little piece, uh, which has a really deep, beautiful frame. It's um, you can see the size of my hand compared to the paint painting itself. Just that little peaceful, uh, serene scene right there. And you can see it's always interesting as we're walking along here to see the difference in the framing and the different thicknesses and different colors. Um, so again, we have a lot going on here in the art storage and you'll be hearing more about art storage in the months 
uh, coming up because we're always looking to expand our art storage since that's one of the faster growing portions of our collection as well as what you just saw um, in my video here the um, archival portion of our collection is growing really really fast so people who are donating their uh, maps and journals and letters and everything else in between so we're always in need of new storage um, solutions and uh, help with that so if you want to get involved um, I will make my common plea for volunteers uh, and you can always learn more about um, volunteering on our website at www.brickstormuseum.org.